Got the practice sled in behind me. We're here at Outlaw Motorsports today. And look at that thing. They just spent the last week going through my sled head to toe, fitted it up with some extra parts. Let's go have a look at it. I'm so friggin' excited to get this in the trailer and get on the road. All right, here we go. Let's start at the back. So we got the full length snow flap. That's Jackson Hole mandatory, ISR mandatory. We got the backwoods BMP big wheel kit in there. But you know what I want to talk about is these rail braces. Check this out. I told him I wanted them strong. I told him I wanted them beefy. And I told him I didn't want them to fail. So you can see the, uh, it's pretty much, the brace is pretty much like having another rail strapped on. I am gonna have so much confidence and trust in those things. I have a custom seat being built right now. It's just getting a uh, rock speed effects cover put on it. It'll match with the Versa grip tunnel grips that I'll be running. And then uh, let's open up the side panel. We get some nice fancy color bits here. Got the anodized gold titanium bolt kit from Whiskey Throttle Power Sports. Got a fire nice P22 cover, Ibex clutching. Got a bolt in the secondary as well. There's a new surprise right in here. So we're going with the Push Industries Titanium Muffler. Uh, they came on board this year, kind of midway through the season. I've been testing it, riding it a whole bunch. Really stoked on that one. Excellent weight savings, good amount of sound. And then uh, tie it all together here with some quick drive two bolts, titanium bolts from uh, Whiskey Throttle Power Sports. Anodized gold. The gold theme sled is starting to look really friggin' good. There's the new Steed 995 Pro X. All right, so we've been keeping this one in the barn for quite some time now. Landon from Outlaw, tracked this snowmobile down. This one's actually been up and over Jackson, full hill uh, numerous times. Lots of uh, legends, snowmobile hill climb racers have used this snowmobile to race Jackson. I'm uh, just honored and pretty grateful, honestly, to be able to take my stab at it. So like I said, it's got a 995 twin in there. All right, Landon, give me the rundown, dude. This thing looks freaking so good. It's, it makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up for sure. So this thing took us about a year to make a deal on. Uh, from the beginning conversations and first photos, uh, honestly, the guy who built it really didn't want to give it up. Um, but we, we got there eventually, and I think one of the main tipping points is that the sled was going back to the US to Rimshaw to go race and be competitive again. Um, so actually it's a, uh, 1999 uh, Pro X 440 or XCR 440 back then chassis. So this is the very first year of the Edge chassis. Um, oddly enough, you had to have a race resume with Polaris to be able to buy one of the, the snowmobiles, those 440s. And being a Polaris dealer, we went back into the history of it and saw who bought it originally. It was actually the, the hill climb legend, David Shepard. <laughs> so that was like a super cool discovery. Um, from there, uh, I don't believe that David ever raced it. Um, I, he ended up making a deal with uh, with Reed Headland, who's one of the you know longtime Canadian pro hill climber. Um, yeah, very very well known in the industry. Uh, Reed, I believe, turned it into a 600 mod for about a season, and then uh, and then Johnny Bodner, uh, flying Johnny B out of Houston, uh, British Columbia, bought it um, as a, a rolling chassis. Uh, Johnny had a lot of history with PSI, so the first thing he did was go down, weld up a set of pipes for this chassis. This is a 995 Genesis motor. So this is finally when PSI, this isn't a big bore, this is a complete hand-built motor. Uh, One-off cases, PSI big air carbs. We currently got it running like 160 PSI compression, uh, right out of the catalog, uh, dyno's 215 horse, 
Johnny swears up and down when he picked it up, he saw it run two and a quarter. So uh, <laughs> it's a Wednesday sled. It's actually ridiculously fast um, for what it is. I mean, it, the motor is a lot faster than the chassis wants you to go for sure. And uh, you know, this chassis was the cat's ass back in the day. So what are we it's, it's what are we looking at for skid, Landon? This isn't uh, this isn't a stock Pro X skid by any means. Man, if you hill climbed in the mid '90s uh, up to the early 2000s and you didn't have an M10 skid, you are not going to make it. So that was a pretty big retrofit. 136 inch track. As you can see, all this sled has ever done is raced. It's never been a, a backcountry sled. Uh, so he's got it built. I mean, it's fully enclosed clutch guard. Studs are in the track. He's got the race spec snow flap on it. Um, it's ready to go up the hill, which has uh, saved us a lot of time and effort because it's pretty turnkey. We went with the uh, CFR Turcot bars on there. That's got the race red. We just had to do that. Uh, landing retrofitted a different set of running boards into the chassis. And then we're going with the Polaris Gripper Ski. The white and red's pretty iconic to the XC or the Pro X uh, chassis, so. We did update the front suspension. This is actually 2004 uh, Pro XR shocks. The huge pain in the ass to find that. <laughs> but, uh, but we wanted to get the front end up and match. Like the M10 uh, was so far ahead of its time that it would outrun all the front suspensions and even the race sleds. So we went to a little bit more modern front end and still kind of fit within the retro rules. Uh, and it actually handles amazingly well. You know, I ran into Dennis Dermis at the Players Dealer Show recently and he's like, dude, I got boxes of those shocks. Let me know if you need more. <laughs> All right, dude, let's get the hood on this thing. Let's load it up. It is looking so damn good. I can't wait to take it up the hill. Just filled the truck up here in Kamloops. I guess the uh, the trip to Jackson starts now. I got uh, three sleds in the trailer, all the parts and everything that I think that I might need. And I'm gonna make the next little few hour drive here, go pick up my dad. We're actually going to swap trailers. We're gonna grab the uh, gray Turcotte trailer that you guys have seen in the past, and then take that one down south. It has all the tools and everything in it. It's just a lot. A lot better setup for uh, going racing. So let's get on the highway, cover some miles, and uh, start making our way down towards Jackson. You want to trade trailers or what? Yes, sir. You got way more space, dude. Big is better. <laughs> I'm racing one class, but for some reason, I have four friggin' snowmobiles that need to go down there. So we're going to uh, get loaded up here and then continue on the rest of the drive. You'd be able to handle the, all that power, dude? No, I, I got a sore leg I can't ride. <laughs> Guess I'll do all the riding this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, first tank of fuel down. I think I'm only one monster in for the day so i'm doing pretty good feeling fresh and another six or so hours we'll be down in afton wyoming getting ready to test so just going to uh, keep crushing miles man and uh such a nice day for it beautiful sunny out and uh we're in the mountains hill hill scotty good number third place finish next up shane hart they call him the flying white what do we have here ryan parker timing official sporting his Shorts and showing his support for the Flying Wine Fan Club. Don't let the fun confuse you. Brian's very professional. Well, I left at uh, 6 this morning. We're getting here. It's about 1.30. Uh, gain an hour or so. 18 hours of travel time on the road. A couple of monsters. We're tired. Time to shut it down. But we've made it to the Star Valley area. 
and uh, we get to go, go ride some snowmobiles tomorrow. So that's all exciting. Uh, we'll see you guys in the morning. We're just making a little pit stop here. We're actually on our way to the uh, test hill. <laughs> where we found this taxidermy shop that's on the way by. And my dad, myself being uh, pretty heavily involved in hunting and, and uh, just the entire sport of being outdoors. We're gonna go in and check this place out. You always gotta tell me what to do, dude. You don't even have the right footwear on. I got socks. <laughs> I'll pull over. It's time to start unloading the iron out of the trailer, get the gear on, and go and do some testing. It is time to go testing. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put my dad on my uh, practice boost. And then in behind me, over here, we got the 995 Genesis Pro X. It's time to uh, go spin some tools, check some plugs, and uh, kind of test this thing by the feel of the seat. There's no tachometer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the spark plugs for uh, jetting. And I'm just gonna go from feel for as far as track speed and RPM goes, and watch the EGTs. So there is pipe sensors. Uh, Watch those EGTs. We're gonna try and get them up into those like mid 12s and uh, see how this goes. Let's get after it. I go again. <laughs> it feels like it should just wheelie over backers, but the skid is working so good that it just like just enough lift. Right on. What kind of temp after you made a few runs now? Still like 1150 on the back. So I think, uh, we'll the I'll, uh, I'll come screaming up in here and I'll just lock the brakes up and we'll shut it down right here. Okay. Ow. How did it sound from the outside looking in? Really good. <laughs> it felt really good. I say bring on the fastest boost here. Yeah. <laughs> One of these ones over here. It's like deja vu all over again, just with another 100 horse. <laughs> Been on this hill before, huh? Betcha. Seems like yesterday. I know. <laughs> Let's see if Toby wants to buy it back. Looks pretty good, honestly. Uh, you know, Brett, I like the color of it. Yeah. Nice marshmallow brown. Yeah. Uh, Landon was saying that, uh, you know, even if it, it even pulls hard at a thousand and you're making 11 something. Yeah. So the initial uh, straight line testing is kind of, we got a couple runs out, about 1100 degrees on the, on the uh, digitrons. So there's probe sensors that go into the head of the pipe. 
and that uh, measures the temperature of the exhaust that comes out of there and that's helping us jet the snowmobile. The snowmobile has dial -a dome so you can actually adjust the compression ratio of the motor with those clickers on top uh, that are around the spark plugs. But we're not even having to use those right now. Um, Landon kind of put the groundwork in before he sent me out with the sled and he had it set up what he thought was pretty good. And I feel like I'm making good power. So I think we're going to um, just keep getting a little bit more testing in it on the straight poles. And then I'm gonna get some gear on and go and start putting in a little course and see what it's like in and out of the bumps and in the corners. But initial, uh, initial testing feels really good. Really interested to see how it'll do up against a, a boost. Um, the track speed is the only unknown right now. We don't have any speedometer or uh, RPM gauge. So strictly just seat of the pants feel, but initial thoughts is it's pretty friggin' rad. I let off right there because I was scared I was going so fast. <laughs> good if I could remember to stay off the brakes.
how capable this snowmobile still is, you know? 24 years old, 25. Yeah. If it's a 99, it's 25. 99, yeah. Pretty impressed. It drops down into the shelf good. Does it? If I go wide on a turn, then I bring it back into the shelf. Yeah. It drops in nice. Right on. That's kind of a wrap on the, uh, I guess, I mean, the preliminary testing. Uh, got the Pro X 995 over my shoulder here. That thing is absolutely flying. I'm loving where that thing is at. And then we'll spend tomorrow and Wednesday uh, riding them a little bit, but mostly just preparing and making sure everything is absolutely perfect come qualifying time at Jackson. We figure we're done testing them now. We can go ride them. That's gotcha. All right.